Hi, I'm Pete Scargill and this short video is about the O1 SDS1102 oscilloscope. Uh, the video accompanies a blog entry on the subject. So this turned up this morning via uh, DHL and it uh, looks pretty much undamaged so let's take it apart and have a look. And inside the box is another box as you might expect. I've received some product information from O1 and the scope itself. The first thing that comes to mind here is, I don't know, I, I was expecting something bigger. I mean, I'm happy that it's not a huge, big, heavy scope, but this is a really light box. Anyway, let's have a look inside that as well. So we have a UK power lead. We have the oscilloscope itself. We have a CD and manual and a USB lead for connecting the scope to the PC should you wish to do so. The CD should be fun because my PC doesn't have a CD anymore. Um, you would you would think manufacturers nowadays would simply point you to the web but there you go the manual the first thing that came to mind was that it's in pretty much perfect English none of this difficult to read stuff uh, it's for an introductory manual it's absolutely fine and of course as you might expect there are a pair of scope leads and a little screwdriver for fine setting the times 10 on the scope. That's pretty standard stuff. And now on to the main item of the day. I have to say I was pretty excited when I uh, got to this point. This is really starting to look small. And there you have it, the scope. So initial impression, uh, light. Handles good, feels solid. The front panel has a nice feel to it. It doesn't seem at all cheap. Uh, there are no controls or anything on the back. There's the mains socket and that's about it. There are a pair of extendable feet on the back, which is handy if you want to use the scope at an angle. And there's the main socket. On the front there are a couple of uh, covers over the scope lead connectors so they have to come off and that that's it really pretty much ready to go so the next step is to take this into my office and plug it in and give it a shot this then is a 100 megahertz, one gigabit sampling desk oscilloscope. It doesn't have a battery inside. It is a mains powered scope. The front really does have a nice solid feel to it. Um, turn it on and let's see what happens. I'm showing this in real time. There you go. There's a nice advert for uh, O1 there. And here we have the display. So the first thing that you'll notice is the display is quite bright. And after doing this video, I checked it out from all different angles. Unlike a lot of early scopes, uh, it, the, you know, the intensity doesn't go off as you look around the sides. So at this point, I was just having a play with the buttons to familiarize myself uh, with the scope. Uh, the background to this is I've moved from an analog scope to this. So some of the controls are familiar, some of them not quite so. But after about half an hour of playing around, it all sort of fitted into place, really. So there are various menus which will pop up on the side there. You can decide which channel uh, the trigger works with. Uh, what kind of trigger, whether it's positive or negative trigger, whether it's AC or DC coupled. You've got a fair range of control on this. But bearing in mind, it is a basic scope. This is not uh, you know, a top of the range piece of uh, instrumentation, uh, but it's just a, a simple desk oscilloscope. 
So the next thing to do after this was to get the scope lead out and use the little test uh, indicator on the bottom right. And on with the scope lead, a uh, pretty normal looking job. Uh, there are a range of end pieces to go on there, so quite comprehensive. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick that scope lead into the test point on the bottom right of the scope. And what you see is exactly what you would expect. Uh, a square wave. I don't know if you noticed there, but it came up resp responsively. I don't know, delays. Um, of course, I've still got to figure out how to use some of these controls, but it's coming together fairly quickly. The square wave, as you might expect, is slightly out. And that's the point of the little screwdriver that they give you. Uh, calibration is really easy. You just turn the screwdriver until you have a perfect square wave. Simple enough. If you watch the wave shape on the scope there, dead easy. And there it is. All set up and ready to go. Though there is a full calibration um, uh, software on this scope, uh, it takes a while to run. Um, and I've, I've done that in the background so as to not bore the pants off everybody. Although this video is shortened, I spent the entire afternoon playing around with the controls to familiarise myself. And I have to say that after maybe two hours of playing around, it's up and running. I can use this as an instrument right now. So if you are still using an old-fashioned scope and you want to move towards something like the one SDS 1102, then you know, you're really not going to find it a struggle at all. The display is absolutely excellent, to be honest. The funny thing is that until this morning, I've been quite happy with my old fashioned scope. You know, it's a dual beam 50 meg job. Didn't look too old. But now that I look back at it, after playing with this new, uh, this new scope for a couple of hours, I just think, goodness, what am I, how am I going to get rid of this? I guess it's, apart from anything else, I've got to consider how much space I'm getting back. This is marvellous. Anyway, there you are. That's the, uh, that's a quick look at the scope. I've not given you an awful lot of technical information here because I'm going to superimpose that on the video and uh, put some information in the blog for you. So we'll just turn that back on. Once you have a waveform up on the screen, getting all sorts of information about frequency and voltage and all the rest of it. It's dead easy just using one of the menu keys there. You can access whatever information you want. As you can see on the screen here, just tons of it. Um, I've tested it. Uh, I'm still waiting for my frequency generator to turn up, uh, at which point I'll come back to this. But I've tested it with a few simple signals. And uh, I have to say, this could be one of the best tools I've had this month. As you might expect, you can wind this thing up to 20 nanoseconds uh, at the, right at the very top end. What, wasn't, what I wasn't quite expecting was how far you could go in the opposite direction. And in fact, you can go all the way down to seconds per division or even hundreds of seconds per division, all the way up to a thousand seconds per division. I can see a lot of monitoring applications for that. Now, of course, if you're used to top end kit, you may well say, well, what's special about that? And fine, but this is not top end kit and it's not that expensive. With that, I'm going to leave you with some technical information on the scope. If you go to the blog, you'll find I've done a bit of a write up there with more information and probably next week I will follow this up with some more testing um, with a decent signal generator. For now I am very happy with this. Hope you liked the video. Please subscribe. Here's some more technical information and we'll see you over at the blog. Thanks for watching.